Pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act, notice of 2020 meeting date was published in the Eastern Express Times and the 100 in Democrat on February 17, 2022, and posted on the bulletin board at Borough Hall. Action may now be taken. Please join me for the flag. Please. I would just like to ask for a moment of silence. Uh, we lost Mr. Chad Hoffman this week. Uh, 86 years old. He was a lifelong resident of Highbridge, married to his wife for 62 years. He was the donator of the uh, C.K. Hoffman Veterans Memorial Park that we all love and our um, people take very good care of. And. He was also named the first honorary Main Street historian by the HBBA. So if we could just have a moment of silence for this great loss to our community. Thank you. Roll call, Adam. Terry? Here. Fran? Here. Hughes? Here. Schwartz? Here. Silvestri? Here. Strange? Uh, here. And Lee? Here, just briefly before we get started, you may have noticed our honorary guest at the end, that's Ms. Diana Ramos from Montclair State University. She is interested in working in government someday, <laughs> oddly enough. <laughs> and uh, she's been working with our green team on a diversity on boards and committee action item. And uh, we welcome her, she's here to observe. So thank you, Diana, for joining us. May I get a motion to dispense with the reading of the March 17, 2022 regular minutes? Move. Second. Roll call. <clears throat> Graham? Yes. Hughes? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Silvestri? Yes. Strange? Yes. And Fair? Yes. Motion to approve the March 17, 2022 regular minutes. Move. Second. <coughs> Roll call. Graham? Yes. Hughes? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Silvestri? Yes. Strange? Yes. And Fair? Yes. On to public comments, three minutes per person. It is the policy of the Borough Council that all public comments on an issue shall be limited to three minutes per person. Comments may be made on any subject pertaining to borough issues. Comments pertaining to public hearings should be saved for that section of the agenda. Each person may make, excuse me, each person may speak once during a public comment section. No debating between residents. Comments should be addressed to Mayor and Council at the public microphone. Ooh, okay, no comments. Awesome. Oh, okay. On the consent agenda, oh, sorry, Sally Ward from Solitude Village. Um, I was looking at the um, documents, supporting documents, and the consent agenda has the Environmental Commission participating in the Townland Yard Sale. That is awesome. And I love that there's going to be a seed exchange during that and a recycling. I mean, it's just cool, very cool. So thank everybody who, you know, is making that go down. Um, also, I read the details on the, uh, the fundraising platform. That also sounds awesome. So, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thanks to Pia, who I just learned about that uh, seed exchange idea today. It is, it's, it's a good one. So, thanks, Pia. She's, she's our green team chair. Thank you. Great. No other public comments? I want to uh, uh, welcome Highbridge. Boy Scout Troop 149, who are here to observe the workings of local government. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Welcome. <clears throat> awesome. No public comments, okay. Uh, ordinance, on to public hearings. Ordinance 2022-008, amend chapter 145, cannabis retail business. Motion to open the public hearing. Second. Roll call. I'm sorry, who's my motion? Graham? Yes. Hughes? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Silvestri? Yes. Strange? Yes. And Fair? Yes. Okay, well, I think I, we've kind of talked about this a lot over six, nine months now. Uh, this is to allow a cannabis retail business in the business zone of Highbridge only. We set forth some guidelines 
for when and if we do get an application that we can make sure the, the proposed uh, organization adheres to. So uh, we've tweaked it along the way met a few times. And Just, I think what we have on the agenda tonight is, is pretty ready to, to go. Uh, just to make note that I, in case people don't understand the brackets are things being removed and the underlines are things being added that is, uh, if you're looking at it just to be clear the, the, would, the amendments and i would want to suggest in the future that we actually cross out <laughs> line out the, the things that are going to be deleted as opposed to bracket them it's for me it's very difficult to tell what's going to be removed versus what's being added you need new glasses yeah. and i would just like to can i ask darlene yep a question we have Darlene Green here, our borough planner, who has Good helped evening. walk us through this. I just need you to help me understand. Um, when we were on the Zoom conference call that you had back with some experts, or the town hall, yes, the okay. town hall thing, and I was taking notes. Okay. And I don't know. If Dar I don't think Darlene was on that call though. Just. Right, well, anyhow, <laughs> I don't. I don't know who said it because I didn't write down who said it. But they were telling us that you can put in here something called a sensitive area, and that you can say so many feet from the schools, which we've already talked about. But my concern was Commons Park, and they, one of the things they listed was parks and playgrounds. And I, my concern is just that corner where you come into the Commons, and the there's, house. there's the house. And mm -hmm. I just think the entrance into that. I would like to mark as a sensitive area, and I don't understand why I can't do that. So the the folks in Trenton have given towns a lot of flexibility in this particular land use designation. It is unique from many other land use designations that you can put very strict restrictions and limitations on it. And so some towns have set proximities or radii around certain places like schools or churches, daycares, public parks. And so municipalities have wide latitude to regulate where these places go. So if the borough wants to, it can limit the proximity of a dispensary to a public park. The only problem is, depending on how large that radii would be, our DV zone is immediately adjacent to the commons. So it would depend on how many feet would you want to pump a radius around the commons to preclude that use. So it's, it's, it is something that you can do. It's not just like a linear <clears throat> from the entrance over. You know, you're talking about a circle it's a, area. It's a buffer zone, mm -hmm. a given distance from a property line. Mm -hmm. So it would go out around whatever the area So it could be so many is. feet from our property. From the, from our property. No, I mean, that, that you would be suggested you take the, whatever shape property is and you have a, a certain distance out around it, that, you know, that's the zone you're creating. Okay. I don't know if we could say the entrance and have a zone around, I don't know. See, that's what I, I want to just to, do the entrance there. Or identify a post in the ground. I, mean, I don't know if anyone else. Here I think feels the that question way. the question is how large a zone are you looking to create around that area? Um, because there's not going to be a dispensary, um, you know, on in that area itself. So the question is, are you looking to create a buffer around that entrance? And if so, how wide? As wide as that house. Well, <laughs> I think we'll be talking about. That and that's all I want, right there in that little entrance corner. Entranceway, specifically, the planning board. Darlene, do you recall, like, the details? We covered a lot of that yeah. that night. Um, so it is possible that it was mentioned. I don't know what the width of that lot is off the top of my head, but it's not a very wide lot. No. But it goes back along our commons where our sign is, our custom alloy sign and the railroad tracks that we're fixing up. Right. I would think a 100 or 200 foot buffer would encompass that entire property. Well, perhaps the next one as well. 
Yeah, I mean, and we, I mean, obviously we could choose to do that. I mean, I, but, but I think the issue comes about is that can we decide, say simply the entrance way in the first 50 feet or not? I, I don't know. I don't know. That could be done. Say the entire if it, park could but if it. it's the park, that park wraps and is the border to all of the other properties on Main Street all the way down to um, Scouts, basically. Is it no, all yeah, it's not. not, not uh, well, scouts. then it's behind Circa. There's, I mean, it comes to a point. My point simply being that it then eliminates that half of Main Street. Just we'd have to well, we'd have to know that if we're making the decision, we want to know so what we're doing. So here's what can I just point? say one thing: um, um, the business zone is very limited. Even the ordinance as it is, which I think is pretty well written and just restricts it to the business zone. Whoever. First of all, we're limiting it to one license in the entire borough, all just on that little strip of land. If someone has an application that they want to present to us, we could deny it. We could say it's too, you know, too close to the park, or you know, maybe they don't have the right financial plan. We don't really know. But we it's, can do that if it's not written down somewhere. Right. Yeah, we're, we. This is not saying anyone can come into Highbridge and open anything. This is saying, we, these are our initial guidelines, and I think it's a good place to start because everything's ready to go in the rest of the state. Um, the application still has to come before council to approve. But if we don't have stipulations in the ordinance saying that they can't, they could easily go to court and say, you can't do They could probably do that right now. <laughs> well, because well, we have nothing in place. Because we have Absolutely. nothing in place. But I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I I would I would assume that as Alan said that if we do not have something specifying that arbitrarily saying we don't want, want you to be at this because we don't like you where it is and when we didn't specify that that was a bad place in the Beginning. ordinance right. I, I would assume that you could uh, That's why I, I mean that'd be my assumption I don't know that I for sure Barry could respond that to that I would imagine you could but to back us up uh, but but on the other hand once again I also is you know you're talking about the entrance the entire commons park is a weird shaped triangle yeah. which reaches back behind right, so main I, street and, and basically would encompass all of that half of main street right, so and once again you're taking way. half of main street and yeah. I, it just seems very there's arbitrary very strict rules about what this thing the dispensary could look like signage you know appointments only uh parking and simply they don't even have parking in that spot so it's the risk is again limited plus it's a long way from being developed and my, I, right I mean there are people uh, Colleen is here from planning board pa Pablo's here we still haven't seen any kind of application for that site if I was somebody that's ready to jump on an application I would look for something that's a little more readily available than that tear down if we don't want a retail business at that specific location the corner or adjacent to the park we should have it in the ordinance so maybe we can add that in a later time i don't think we need to keep tabling the one we have that's pretty much ready to vote on we can't just amend it tonight well it would, i mean it would then have to be reintroduced and voted another time throughout the public hearing and until the next meeting, like you had the last time, based upon the planning board's recommendation. Yeah, no, we gotta have. You know what? You are right. We have to get sent back to planning board for their review for consistency with the land use ordinance first. Yeah, I think we're um, again trying to get down to details of something that might happen to in the future when we need to focus on what is there right now. We change ordinances all the time. We do. I mean, this one has been. It, when was it originally introduced, Adam? And you've been there, I yeah. Apologize. So again, it's, it's advertising. We've been through planning board twice. I mean, it's it's good as it is for what we need right now. I, I mean, I have to say, I I don't agree with the idea of just assuming someone's not going to move into that building I, as a basically a teardown, as you said. <laughs> I would imagine that that would be a, an easy place to say, oh, good, I'm going to come in, tear it down, build what I want quickly. Um, so that I would, I would think if someone Look at Borough Hall. <laughs> we still have Borough Hall. Well, and, and that, but that is a choice. People offered to tear it down and build something and, and would have done it within a few months. I mean, well, that, I that was a very... That. I don't know about that. But we were offered we quite a bit and down? chose not to take it because we knew that people wanted to save the building. I mean, that was... 
That was a discussion. We reintroduced the, but, but either way, that was something that went on for months. And so I'm, I'm not sure I want to bank on it. On the other hand, um, you're right. We can, we can always amend things later or change it in the future if we, if we come up with a better idea, as long as no one else applies for something in the interim, because we can't then respond, I assume, change things after someone applies. I, would, I, think, I think that's right. Um, well, the, the property's already under contract. Well, it, exactly. So that's, it's unlikely, but I, I don't like banking on that. But, but at the same time, I also don't like the idea of having a weird convoluted line that squiggles through downtown that says this house in the front and this house in the back and this, not this. That just seems odd to me. If our downtown business district is the only spot and the zoning people said, okay, this is, it'll, it makes sense, then that's it. There's just a little rectangle. That's the place. And that's it. And it's, and it's simple and straightforward. That zones it. But I think that's uh, it seems fairer zoning. to the businesses in town. Be covered in, uh, that's kind of what we went through with when we were talking about um, West Main. Right. We always have to be careful about spot zoning and that you're not arbitrary or capricious. And the planning board has discussed this a lot. And they did find that the ordinance <clears throat> was consistent with the master plan. But ultimately, it is a policy decision on what conditions you want to put on this specific use. So as the policy making entity, you're given pretty wide latitude to put parameters on any use. But this one, I have to admit, more so than others just because of the way the state legislation was written. I mean, couldn't you submit that? Raising it as an issue really doesn't protect you. I, I, I think that you know if it's not in the ordinance, um, you know, discussion about it doesn't really help you. I think that the real issue is whether get this in place so you have the protections that are in here right now. If you want to amend it, maybe then amend it and send that amendment to the planning board so that they can review it and see whether it's consistent. But you have something in place right now, mm -hmm. or do you want to just keep? Putting this off. I mean, that's really the choice in and, my mind if you want to change it. And I think that is an important consideration. At this point, we've got nothing. We, we've added things to this to add penalties that are fairly clear, and I have to say, pretty simple, straightforward. Here are the penalties. Here's what you have to abide by. Here's what you can't do. Here's what we're going to do if you, you mess up. We've added things like that, uh, that we've altered some things to make it clearer. This at least provides us a framework at the moment so that we don't have to fight things about a lot of things. There are a lot of things are in there. If we then want to draw a funny thing around that property and see what it hits and decide whether we want to expand, we can certainly do that. But at least we have these other protections in place. So I think that's a, a very reasonable thing to say as well. Henry, is it possible just to remove a lot and block number? And no, that's not that's not well, yeah. I'll defer, but you know, that, that just cries out of spot zoning, which uh, is not permitted. I mean, that's exactly what you're looking for is one. Yeah. Right, right. Block, right? But well, but it's got to be tailored, and, and, and you know, it, it really would take a, you know some discussion to make sure that it's properly done. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, I don't think we're in a position here tonight to have that discussion as to you know what can and can't be done, what wouldn't be considered spot zoning, mm -hmm. what might. Um, I just don't think we're in a position to do that. That that's going to take some some real discussion and consideration if that's what we want to do. I would agree. And the other issue that Councilman Strange raises is, is an important one because the Commons is a very odd shaped lot that does run along the western side of the DB zone. And it, it, because it has almost, it narrows down to a tail. If, depending on what buffer you decided, you would more than likely eliminate almost all of the lots on the west side of Main Street. And you may have then some lots where the parking lot's prohibited, but the building is permitted to have the use because of the way the buffer falls, which I think would be an even more perplexing situation where you have part of a lot that is permissible and part of a lot that is not. Um, so I, I hear your concern and I would be very hesitant to just pick lots and say, well, they're not allowed, but every other lot in the zone is allowed. And that's, and that's why every ordinance I've seen 
where they want to preclude, whether it's a dispensary or a cultivation facility, it's always been about a radius around certain, as you say, sensitive areas, whether it be daycare, uh, church, whatever that town deems um, that they just don't want these types of uses nearby. They put in a radius number and that's in their ordinance. I think it makes sense to vote on it tonight and, and to uh, make the commitment to look at that, the radius from the, the commons area and forward it on our, our suggestions to the planning board and hopefully amend the ordinance in the near future. Yeah, I would be comfortable with that. <clears throat> Any comments from the public? Yes. <clears throat> Pablo Delgado, 93 Circle. Oops. So um, this is regarding the ordinance. I just wanted to again share my, my views. Um, I had discussions with the board last week at the board meeting, given that when I voted in, in favor of the current ordinance or the, the current the recommendation, um, it wasn't in line with what at the time I thought I was voting for. So I think there was a misunderstanding. That's why I had the opinion that I had last time. I was actually incorrect. The way the voting went actually was in fact in line with the, with the letter. Um, it was a misunderstanding of how I interpreted what was finally decided. Um, in, in regards to the, to the, to the changes and misused concerns, which were exactly the, the concerns that I had been discussing during the planning board, um, I understand the concern about how to do it in a way that is relevant to, um, to the needs that we're requesting in terms of keeping them away from certain corridors where students or the people that are recreating are, are passing by. Um, I know it gets very difficult and technical. I know there's some things in the ordinance now that talk about the, the, the storefront has to face, my understanding is 513, which would be Main Street. And perhaps if we looked at that in consideration with also adding something that said the property cannot abut any recreational uh, facility, which would be Columbia Trail and the Commons. Part of that, instead of establishing a radius, maybe that's another way to work around, address the needs that, are, that have been requested it removes the two properties. I know one of them is, I actually own it, so I know that there's not going to dispensary and it's going to go there anytime soon, but there's other ones that are open, and I think this would address some of the concerns about having a dispensary that's literally where everybody's riding their bikes on Sundays and Saturdays, kids are going to school, and late to school day, right from the beginning of the, the entrance of the commons, and, and it could be done in a way that if you reference the, the recreational areas there, which are both the county park, which is the Columbia Trail, and then the, the commons, it may address this issue and don't have to be going back and forth with amending it later. That's my two cents. Thank you. Thanks, Pablo. Hi, uh, Mike Ronsky, West Main Street Hybrid. Uh, just in the interest of time, I'll just read the comments that I have. Um, so what I have to say may not be may be contrary to most thoughts on this subject, but I have a right to my opinion, and everyone's opinions, opinion matters. Like some of you in this room, I grew up in the just say no generation, and not that long ago, weed was considered a crime and rele relegated to the ranks of illicit drugs. Somehow in a very short amount of time, we graduated from calling it weed to cannabis to relieve the stigma, taking it from where it should be, which is considered a gateway drug, to a mainstream drug, and putting it right on Main Street and within walking distance of two schools, the very center of town, and nearby residential areas. The town is only two square miles, so you're in a residential area pretty much wherever you go, from Main Street or in the commercial area. It's something more than normalization of drug use, wrapped in a new package called enlightenment and acceptance. Some would say it's the best way to educate young people to take it out of the back streets and make it more mainstream, you can educate without promoting and making drug use tolerable. Just because it's a way to generate revenue does not make it smart. And just because it's becoming more acceptable by those who want to generate revenue does not mean it's right nor acceptable to everyone. Our younger generation has enough problems without making even more drug use seemingly acceptable. Just because others are following the current narrative doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. I'm hearing that this is such a great thing for Highbridge, and we are uh, setting the trend. Highbridge can be a leader in many ways, but not by passing this ordinance. I've seen some pretty bad decisions in the town over the past 30 years, in my opinion, 
This could be just one more added to the list. Don't make this a bad decision. Just the fact that this is a 10 page ordinance proves that it's controversial. Be representative, Re representatives that act in the best interest of the residents and not in the best interest of a dollar. Don't let Highbridge become the place to go to get high. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Sally Ward from Solitude. Um, I just heard the words about growing up in a time where the words just say no happened. Well, I grew up then too, and it did not work then and it's not gonna work now, um, in my opinion. Um, the cannabis issue is a legal issue now in New Jersey. It's legal to do the things that this ordinance is set up to very carefully and specifically achieve. Um, and I believe that the children of today are a lot wiser than the children of my age, simply because it's 2022 and not well, I'm not going to say what year I was <laughs> Long, long time ago. And I believe the kids are wise enough to be able to choose for themselves what, what is right and what is not right. And we've got a great school system. We've got a great teacher right here who's brought up a lot of the kids here. And I trust you and the teachers to do the best that you can. And I trust the kids to do the best that they can. They go by the liquor stores, how many of them? and the bars on our main street every day, and that doesn't mean that they're like, oh, let's go do that. That's, you know, it doesn't work. The just say no idea does not work. Um, so I just say, yes, use what you worked very hard over all these months with this ordinance to mold what it is that you all believe is right. And, you know, we're gonna stay within the new law. So I'm just saying, I trust the kids, I do. Motion to close the public hearing for ordinance 2022-008. Move. Second. Roll call. Graham. Yes. Hughes. Yes. Schwartz. Yes. Silvestri. Yes. Strange. Yes. And Fair. Yes. Motion to adopt ordinance 2022-008. Move. Second. Roll call. Graham. Yes. Hughes? Yes, with the hope that we will get amending it down in the future for the corner. Um, we'll work on it later. Schwartz? Yes. Sylvester? Yes. Strange? Yes. And Barry? Yes. Okay. On to public hearings, amend and adopt the budget. On these big moments. <laughs> Motion to open the public hearing on budget <laughs> resolution. <laughs> I missed that. All right, I said this is what she lives for. Uh, yeah. Uh, motion to open the public hearing on budget resolution 074-2022. I'll move. Second. Roll call. Graham? Yes. Hughes? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Silvestri? Yes. Strange? Yes. And Perry? Yes. Okay. You have a presentation by Bonnie. Okay. 2022 budget. <clears throat> Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> That's just page one. <laughs> I'd say I have to get my glasses on, but I don't have any. So the, the, the we'll post this on the website. What's that? We'll post this on the website. Oh, yeah. yeah. The 2022 budget being adopted tonight totals $6,363,712 compared to a final 2021 budget of $6,641,986. Our municipal tax rate is remaining flat at a 1.046. We are within our cap appropriation of 2.5% with $41,338 set aside in our cap bank for the future. And despite the pandemic, tax collection rates remain stable with less than a 1% difference from the prior year. We are utilizing $900,000 of surplus. Our surplus was regenerated in 2021, leaving us an additional 269,000 to utilize to maintain a flat tax rate. 
between December 31st of 2018 and January 1st of 2022, current fund surplus has averaged one and a half million while utilizing an average of 875,000 annually. Total appropriations broken into departments shows general administration, which you'll see at the top 9%, Public safety, which is the 19% uh, red on the right hand side. DPW, right below that at 7%. Parks and Rec, next to that at 17% on the bottom, which also includes the golf course. And coming back around, the green towards the top, 19% is our debt payments. In a simpler term, 25% of salary and wages. 24% is debt and capital expenses, 46% for operating inside and outside of CAP. Your tax bill is comprised of not only the municipal budget at 24%, but also local school at 50% and regional school at 16%. County budget plus the county open space fund and the library tax comprise the remaining 10% of the total tax bill. In comparison, the amount to be raised by taxation to support the municipal budget between 2019 and 2022 has increased 4%. School levies increased by 6.69% over the same period. Adding in the regional high school, it appears their introduced budget is up by 1.4 million. Based on Highbridge's percentage of the budget, the increase is approximately 300,000 from last year's amount. If you look at that in terms of the tax bill, where there's no increase in the tax rate for the municipal budget, the increase in the tax rate resulting from the proposed high school budget would be seven cents, which equates to approximately $181 to the average property owner. Uh, this is information I just got today. Uh, so this is what I'm showing you. The public hearing on the 22-23 budget will be held during the Board of Ed meeting on April 26th at 7 p.m. in the district administration office. The Highbridge tax base consists of taxable and exempt properties and that totals $373,747,952. Eighty-three percent of the total tax base is residential. When you take out the exempt properties and just look at the taxable base, which consists of farmland, commercial, industrial, apartments, vacant land, and residential properties, the residential base represents 90 percent of the taxable portion. Between 21 and 22, the taxable base increased by 2 percent. Vacant land increased by 8%, residential by 1%, and commercial industrial by 13%. Taxable values have steadily increased from 2018 to 22, rising over 4%. The average home value in Highbridge continues to rise. Currently, the average home value is 232,656, up from 229,604 last year. In 2020, debt service payment was 1,351,000. In 2021, the Green Acres loan for acquisition of Lake Solitude and Springside was paid off. This year, the final payment on golf and general improvement bonds will be paid in full, representing about $450,000 annually in debt payments. So in 2024, you can see the annual debt service payment has been reduced to 897,000 from 1,351,000. This results in a reduction in debt from 19% of the total appropriation in 2022 to 15% in 2024. Looking back, major projects completed in 21, 2021 consisted of finishing Washington Avenue phase three, continuing through River Road Phase 1, which also included drainage work. Design work for River Road Phase 2 was completed by the borough engineers and recently awarded. 
drainage work was completed on East Main and Highland Avenue. Phase one of the sewer pump renovations was awarded and is now about 92% complete. And the well lake generator has been installed using funds available through FEMA from Hurricane Sandy. Approximately 40% of the water meters have been replaced. The record storage facility is up and running in the third bay of the rescue squad building. Union Forge restrooms have been turned into a handicap accessible facility. Swing sets were replaced at Union Forge Park with the help of middle school students and also include a handicap set. 2022 infrastructure projects for streets and roads include River Road Phase 2, which was recently awarded and set to begin soon, the paving of Highland and East Main. We were waiting for Elizabethtown Gas to provide some gas hookups to interested owners before beginning, so time is running out. If you want a gas hookup, please call Elizabethtown as soon as possible. Center Street will be our next roadway to be redone with assistance of a DOT grant. Design work will be completed in 2022 and construction to begin in 2023. Water mains will be replaced around the middle school, Taylor Prospect, Thomas, New, and also the Church Street extension to Mountain Avenue. After replacing the water mains in these areas, the road will be repaved. Water meter replacement will continue. Call to make an appointment if yours hasn't been replaced yet. A water tower maintenance program will be put into place in compliance with the asset management plan that was completed in 2019. Bunvale Well Improvements, the first of our asset management plan project, is set to have a contract awarded by June 30th. This is going to be financed through the NJIB at a favorable rate. Renovations to the sewer pump house will continue with phase two designs. We're involving JCP&L for potential energy savings through the use of qualified equipment sources. And finally, the Recycling Center on Dewey Avenue, we hope to have designs completed and approved for completion of phase one. A few things going on. Mm -hmm. Just as an aside, Sound. <laughs> 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 I'm not open that. All right, we'll go back to that. Grants awarded. Grants awarded included 62% of the estimated cost for Center Street from the NJDOT. All of the design work for Safe Routes to School Design Engineering. 55% of the cost of River Road Phase 2 is also being covered by an NJDOT grant. And the first tranche of local fiscal recovery funds from the federal government will be put towards water main improvements. FEMA has given us preliminary approval for a hazardous mitigation project shoring up the banks of the Raritan from the top of West Main to the DPW facility with a three to one match. The second round of local fiscal recovery funds due to be received this year will be utilized for additional water main replacements in the Jenny Jump area. Additional grants awarded, the DCA recreational grant, which is to be used for a permanent restroom facility in the Commons, a sustainable Jersey grant for the Commons walkway from Main Street, which is underway, an economic development grant from the county to update outdated sections of various zoning ordinances, a grant from the New Jersey Historic Trust to cover plans and specs for replacement of the West Porch at Solitude House, 
and a grant from the Hunter and County Historical Committee for the reconstruction of the West Porch at Solitude House. Additional applications have also been submitted this year for the reconstruction of the North Porch. New Jersey Clean Energy is providing approximately $10,000 for the replacement of the third AC unit at the firehouse and also updated lights and switches. And thanks to our committees and volunteers, we were recertified by Sustainable Jersey at the bronze level for 2018 through 2021. All right, so to wrap it up, what's in the 2022 budget? We have major road improvements, continuing with River Road 2, Center Street design work, repaving of various roads around the middle school, following the water main replacements, upgrades to the sewer pump house, upgrades to Bunvale Well, continuation of the water meter replacement program, security and safety upgrades to rural buildings, upgrades to the HVAC systems, repairing and retaining wall and ramp at the firehouse, replacement of three DPW vehicles, police vehicle and golf equipment, uh, hiring of replacement personnel for the DPW and police, continuation of the records management upkeep and disposal, technology upgrades, including a new cloud-based construction permitting program and online fillable trackable forms for the website, and also some new cybersecurity upgrades. And that is it. Uh, one final note is that we were recently awarded this pedestrian Ad advocacy award from Hunterdon County. And we also have a new clip to show from uh, that if we have time. Yeah. It's from Go Hunter. No, it's kind of a dirty pre work. I'm sorry. That's gone now. It's gone now. Okay. <laughs> Best laid plans. Well, we didn't have any popcorn. We'll, we'll post this <laughs> on, uh, <laughs> online. It'll come up. It'll oh, it's coming up? Oh, okay. okay. Technology we can post the link up. Uh, yeah. right. Maybe before we leave tonight, we might have yeah. a Yeah, OK. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As you are. Here's my discussion of legal Second issues showing okay. the video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I need uh, comments or questions from council? I just want to thank Bonnie for all the hard work that she did on that. My pleasure. Great job. I couldn't see a thing, but it looked like <laughs> it made sense. No? Any public comments? Questions? Come on. Sally Ward from Solitude. Bonnie is an amazing person, and I am just so grateful. All of the years that you know she's been in this town, she's in a position now where she's saving us a, a fortune with her hard, hard work, and, you know, thank you, Mayor and Council, for supporting her in all her great efforts. So, I just, we're so lucky here in Highbridge to have you all. So, thank you. Thanks, Ellie. Yeah, great. Doug? Yeah. I'm Walker, uh, 33 Sylvan Road. Just a couple observations. Um, I noticed that the, um, cost of the health care this year. The actual cost last year was 188000 and in this year's budget is 263000 so that's an increase of 40%. Um, utility, water utility salaries are up 19%. Um, the sewer utility salaries are up 21%. And that's the same for the solid waste. That's up 121%, the salaries over what we actually paid last year. <coughs> And for solid waste, uh, we pay $83,000 in, in salaries for solid waste, and it's an outsourced service, so um, I really don't understand that. Um, 
We also have an amount to be raised by taxes of 82,000. So the tax rate is staying the same, but the, uh, the amount to be raised by taxes is going up. And uh, basically what I wanted to say. Oh, and then I saw on the, on the form there, it looks like we're doing Nassau Road in 2026. So I want to say that's in good time. Thank you. Do you want to comment on any of those salaries? You have to take the budget as a whole. The personnel for the borough work in various departments. So we all don't have one job. We work between the utilities. The utility is sourced out, yes, the solid waste utility, but it is also administratively managed by the borough. So there are costs involved. So each employee might get a different payroll mm -hmm. line, if mm -hmm. you will, from each of those different right. budgets. Any other questions? Hi, Colleen Comroy, Too Many Court. Um, I just, you mentioned around the middle school, um, and we had the one meeting a few months ago about um, Taylor Street. Was that going to be redone? Because there was the engineer came out. Not the one way, though. Not the one way, but is right. the whole thing going to be done yep. with sewage? Mm -hmm. Okay. How, how how far in the future is that project? Oh, that's coming soon. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh, okay. So at the end of the year. Because okay. it's gotten, obviously, yeah. Yeah. a lot worse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and every time it ends, it's, it's worse. Mm -hmm. And so we pretty much have, we've sent it out that said, you know, for parents not to use that at all. So they are going the other way. But I just, so it's soon. Yeah. Okay. And I, I do appreciate uh, everything. Thank you. Um, I did have another question about the park and is there a possibility? I know we we've doing some things with trees. Is there a way to maybe update the signage at the park and also at the commons um, to do some work there around the sign, do some plantings and stuff? Is there any money to possibly do some of that? Bonnie and I talked today, and I talked to Rick about the the park and doing some things at the fields. But if there's any way to take some money around the signs, the one sign down um, at Union Forge. Is, is getting quite old and really needs is, is rotting basically um, needs to be replaced um, and the sign I know I had sent you a while ago Michelle um, about doing some plantings around the commons entrance now to really um, to add something now so if there's some money that would be great be happy to I'm sure environmental would be happy yeah I feel like there's grant money for right. new signs yeah. for right. sure so for us going back to sustainable Jersey we would like to do like a phase two Yep. what we're doing at the comments that's we're moving forward we talked today so hopefully next week we'll have something going there but if we could get something with that that sign and, and the entrance i think um it would make it's ready. A big, it would make a big difference yeah, yeah. all right thank you thanks <laughs> And probably we got an angry circle, I guess, while we're asking funds. Um, on the recreational side, I think last week I asked about um, potentially helping out with the infield at the at the middle school field here in Union Forge. We did an assessment of what needs to be done, and I think we've got the, we'll get the, the volunteers to help out, get the work done. A few things that we <coughs> couldn't do, and uh, I thought maybe if there's funding in the recreational budget, um, they need new bases in that infield. They're probably, as old as the infield has been um, built um, and they're falling apart and they probably could be even hazardous for the kids to play on. And the other thing is that um, I'm not sure what or cost it, but over the course of last season to this year, there's missing dirt in the infield. I don't know if there was fires. I think I had asked, maybe they, they said fires were maybe done at the infield sand and when they were removed, they took the dirt along with it to avoid any nails from pallets or whatever being left behind. Well, now we have big holes in the infield that we need to cover, and I don't know where we're gonna get the dirt from. So if there's any way to get sand or something delivered and just dump them when the when the volunteers get there, we can then spread it out and even out everything else. So be right ahead. Thank you. Those parks get a lot of use. They really do. I mean, everybody <laughs> is constantly using them. But we did, we did talk about bases, I think, last year for all the, I don't know where we left off with that, but, um, any volunteer opportunity, Pablo, you know, we'd be open to, especially where it pertains to the middle schoolers using that field, so. We're just about ready to order the bases. Oh, okay. Figuring yes. out which ones would work best. Oh, okay. For all the fields in the Did you hear that? Yeah. I'm, I was. Yeah. We're just about to order bases. All right, excellent. Yeah. And, uh, we, you know, 
But where do you get volunteer that kind of, away? For sure. Where do you get that kind of sand? I mean, I would assume that has to be bought special for infields. It's that weird that's red dress. That's the Delaware River. That's. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, it's a certain kind of dirt, isn't it? For, um, for infields. The wrong person asked. Yes. I mean, I don't know. I, oh, okay. So it's a certain. Yeah. Okay. It's a specific. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe have steal from the beach. <laughs> Any other uh, public comments or questions? Motion to close the public hearing on budget resolution 074-2022. Second. Roll call. Graham? Yes. Hughes? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Silvestri? Yes. Strange? Yes. Baird? Yes. Motion to adopt resolution 098-2022, amending the budget. Move. Second. Roll call. Graham? Yes. Hughes? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Silvestri? Yes. Strange? Yes. And Barry? Yeah. Motion to adopt budget. Resolution 074-2022. Move. Second. Roll call. Graham? Yes. Hughes? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Silvestri? Yes. Strange? Yes. And Barry? Yeah. Okay, we have no discussion items tonight. Introduction of ordinances. Ordinance 2022-011, purchase of DPW vehicle. F-350, motion to introduce ordinance 2022-011. Move. Second. Roll call. Graham? Yes. Hughes? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Silvestri? Yes. Strange? Yes. And Barry? Yeah. Ordinance 2022-011 shall be published in the Express Times and or the Hunterdon County Democrat along with the public hearing date of April 14th, 2022. On to the consent agenda. I would like to pull resolution 104, 2022. Anybody else? I'd like to pull uh, 99 and 100. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know why I always get screwed up with this. So we'll. Uh, Motion to pull resolution 099, 100, and 104. Move. Second. Roll call. Graham? Yes. Hughes? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Silvestri? Yes. Strange? Yes. And Barry? Yes. Yeah. Okay, uh, Mr. Silvestri, why don't you kick us off with your 99 and... Yeah, sure. I'm on the... Set up to give butter. Can you just explain how this is going to be used? Whatever. Sure. It's a uh, program that um, we were presented with to use by some of the committee members for fundraising platform. Um, it's free for us to utilize. Uh, what happens is the um, donors, something would be set up on the screen for the, the program that we'd be donating to. The donors would then pay whatever fees are involved when they give their donation. If they choose not to give the fee, the donation that we get is reduced by the amount of that fee for the credit card processing, basically. Can you just give an example of fees or what committee you're going to be using this platform? Well, the, the grounds for um, art okay. would be one of them. Um, the historical committee has also sought use of it. So um, any of the other fundraising events that we have, it, online easy. But it's not borrowed use yet. If I was registering for the soapbox, there would be no, out of the platform. No, no, it wouldn't be for that. It would just be for donations. Yeah. And I guess on 100, um, we just clear that up. I know we emailed a little bit today yeah. trying to get an answer, yeah. but we just clear that up just a little bit for right. me on the, how you need to bring in part of it to start. And right. Then. <clears throat> right. Um, by June of this year, we have to actually transition to a new construction permitting program, which would allow applicants to apply online. So we have to have our, our applications available online for people to fill out and submit. Um, in order to do that, we're switching to a new program, hopefully called GovPilot, which offers not only that portion of the program, but other aspects as well, which would allow us to do greater, um, more user-friendly fillable forms than we have online now. So the forms that we have available online now 
for landlord registrations and parking permits and um, a couple of other things would go to this new program. Um, what happens now is the program we have is just basically a glorified fillable form program. So it doesn't connect directly with our payment system. So when people make a payment online, even though they're, they're bumped from the application to the payment source to pay, the two don't connect on our side. So we always have to go back to the application and the payment in the bank to try to mix and match them together. With the GovPilot program, it integrates with the program we use now so that the, it would be a flow through process for somebody that applies online for a permit. It would automatically accept the payment and automatically issue the, the permit without any in between steps and, and processes. So, right now, we're going to start with the construction module and the landlord registration, parking permit, and vacant registration. And we're looking forward with the vacant registration also that we can have a greater flexibility to keep track of the vacant properties that we have in town and better to enforce what we need to with keeping track of times when we notify and and advertise and so forth and so on. So I think it's a it's a great program for us. So it's the twenty five thousand for this year. It's a three year contract and so it would be twenty five for each year. Uh, we can add modules after that and depending on what type of module we, we add it would be a different Different so the, the system we're using now, you can delete that and transfer yes. and replace it with the gut pilot. Correct. Here's the, here's the right here. I'm fine with that. Okay. Okay. The uh, resolution I pulled is a salary and wages. And first, I want to say that our borough has many, many good, dedicated employees <coughs> who provide our residents with necessary services that truly allow our town to function smoothly. And I, I want to thank all of them for their service and dedication to the town. Now, I reviewed the salary and wage resolution and compared it to the salary and wage resolution from last year to look at what the increases in salaries were. And on the low end, we have increases in salary of, of 2%. And on the high end, we have salary increases of 17%. We have two people that will be getting 2% increases, one person that will be getting 4.3% increase, two people will get, be getting a 9.6% increase, one person will be getting a 13.9% increase, one person will be getting a 14.4% salary increase, and one person will be getting a 16.9% salary increase from 21 to 22. I'm sure there are various reasons why the increases are what they are now, and it's a fairly wide range of salary increases. On the high end, 16.9%, that's many multiple years of most people's salary increases, not just one. And I, I don't believe that we should be voting on Resolution 104, 2022 tonight, until such a time as Borough Council as a whole has a comprehensive plan to address current and future employee compensation. This includes salaries, yearly salary increases, pension benefits, health care costs, and especially retiree health care costs. Without such a comprehensive plan, we as council people are not performing our fiduciary obligations as, and as elected officials the taxpayers of High Ridge or the employees of the borough of High Ridge. Therefore, I move that Resolution 104 2022 be tabled until, until such a time as Borough Council as a whole has developed a comprehensive plan to adequately address the current and future cost of total employee compensation. Let me just say that we have employees that have been here for a long time. Our employee compensation as a borough doesn't change that much. Can you provide details of the 16% increase? Certainly. Because I'm not aware, Bonnie. Are you aware of um, an employee? We only have a few, so that would stand out. I, with it. I had 
emailed you a, a list of the phrases that were in this resolution uh, since we didn't have time to discuss it at our budget meeting. But as far as the well, you and Alan, yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, I can only associate that with someone whose job description has been changed. So there were other jobs put on that line than there were before, which would have accounted for the increase. Well, it, it's not just the, the 16% increase. There's also a 14% increase. There's a 13% increase. It, it's not just one. It, it, it varies in range from 2% for two people up to 16% for one person. Oh, did anyone get more than a 2% increase? I, I, I'm aware of about five people that had salary adjustments. It's a, so, it's a know, comparison of salary. It's 2021 your, to 2022. As far as I know, they're apples to apples. The... Regardless. Okay. The, again, this is a resolution that's been on the consent agenda for many years. We have the same employees for the same amount of time. Exactly. It does, the numbers don't change. I mean, they really don't change that much. But compensation has changed. Two percent. No, it's the not. The exceptions to the two percent were, were recognized in our discussion titles. Okay. okay. I understand that they were recognized as being increases, but they're still increases to, to, to someone's salary. You may have a reason for it, but there's still an increase to the person's salary. And there have been other increases to compensation for borough employees since December of last year. So considerable increase in overall compensation for those employees. Okay, I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave this up to you, but uh, I don't really so think I this moved, is a reason to table and make this I, more complicated than it, it is. Wait, or has I been moved, every year. I made a motion to table it until such a time as we are able to make a comprehensive study of employee total employee salaries, compensation. Uh, and you're suggesting having a like a plan as to in the future going forward we would tend to do this based on this we would yes. tend to do this based on this make Correct. that, that a, so uh, uh, at the moment I, I don't think we do do we I mean we just we, 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 we take things on a case-by-case -case basis we ever? over time we now. just we have just added in December with chapter 48 incredible <coughs> Incredible, That's not true. An not, incredible increase some, in cost that is not going true. forward into the future. And if you please, oh my gosh, you interrupt me every time I try to talk about Chapter 48. Uh, and you're absolutely you absolutely the, wrong the, the about it. Absolutely incorrect. Okay. It's a, an incredible obligation for the town going forward. We're not seeing it this year. We're not going to likely see it next year, but over the next 10, 15 years, this is a financial obligation that the taxpayers in this town are going to have to foot the bill for. You will not be mayor. I doubt you'll be mayor anymore at Dasbro at that point. But we're going to have to deal with it. Well, what we're talking about tonight is the salary and wages uh, resolution that we put on the consent agenda every year and have for many mayors before me and many mayors after me, many council people, people after you. Um, we can have another conversation of Chapter 48. You and I. This have is a, all part this, of. It's not. This is all part of employee compensation. It, we're talking salary and wages here. That, it's that, that is that. correct, but it's all part of employee compensation, and we need a comprehensive plan if to address employee compensation, full <laughs> employee compensation. Well, I mean, I, I don't think it's inappropriate to have a conversation about it. I mean, compensation is a part of, you know, I'm compensated for the work I do. Um, and what I get in benefits is part of that and salary is part of that and everything else. I mean, that's all my compensation, it's one package. And typically when negotiations occur, you take from one, give to another, and you finally come up with a, whatever you're gonna be paid and what you're gonna get. Um, I mean, I, I, I'm sure it's different in education. I mean, I, you know, uh, did you I'm, vote I'm for on, salary and wages when it was on the consent agenda last year? Did I vote for it last yeah. year? Yes. What about the year before that? I, I voted then as well. Although what about the year time, before although that? there were times when yes, we looked yes, at it and yes, said, yes, yes, yes. And said We're talking two percent raises. Well, I mean, I will say that there are some numbers that are not two percent. That's for sure. There are two two um, employees that are having a strict two percent increase. 
based on Listen, if we're going to talk resolution. employee salaries, then we go to an executive session, and that's for another meeting. So if people really want to table this agenda, I think there's a move, uh, a motion. Yes, there is a motion. Yeah, there's nothing seconded, I don't That's true. Yeah. Second. Roll call. Graham? <laughs> I do not want to table that for the next moment. Hughes? No. Schwartz? Yes. Silvestri? Yes. Strange? Yeah, I mean, I think it would be worth discussing. And maybe it's time when we need to begin having a, a plan. Barry? No. I don't know. I don't think you can, though. Your husband you may is have part a of conflict. Oh, okay. I, I was wrong. Ty, well done. I would draw my vote. That's fine. Well, and can we, can we, at the same time, can we make a proposal or to sit we'll, down and we'll come up with it and come up with a plan? We'll, we'll I talk mean, about it later. Because so I, I think we have to go to executive well, session. Well, it's embarrassing enough. It because well, the majority did not vote in favor. It was three right. to three. Um, so it did not pass. So now you go back to the original resolution and decide whether or not you want to pass the salaries and wages as that's that fourth year. Yeah, great. Okay. I have a question. And, and of course, you know, Alan can certainly reserve the right to try to, you know, work to have a more comprehensive plan going forward. You know, but that's that's up to the council whether you want to do that going forward. But now there's a resolution that's on the table. Well, in terms of wages to, vote, to, to we're, approve we're, or not approve the salaries. Correct. Right. Right. Well, yeah, we're okay. still, I think we're still in the discussion portion of it. No, we voted. You voted. The well, vote was no, only no, whether we, or not to table, to table Right. So, so we have now, not the, now the discussion is whether or now not we go to, back to approve the, the uh, wages solution. and uh, salary as set forth. Well, if and, I may say, I really don't think it's appropriate to have employee conversations about individual salaries at a public meeting such as I, I, I don't think we have about salary lines. Um, as described here, you're not but talking about individuals. But there's a clear misunderstanding. And if it gets, of and if it, it's, if you certainly you could not do that in executive session without notifying, you know, the people involved. Right. Uh, but I think that you can discuss salary lines and you know what's what's included and what's not. I do, Mayor. Okay. Well, and I want I want to understand. My understanding was always that, as a board of ed, for example, could discuss my employment in public. If they wanted to do it in an executive session, they had to tell me, and I had the right to demand that it be done in public. That's yeah. absolutely as, as, right. So, but you could always talk about it. They could always talk about me in public. That, that <laughs> you could stop right. them from doing as that. As awkward as but it may as, be, as awkward public, as it might be, you know, sometimes um, yes, that's correct. But that's but that's an individual. I, I don't I mean that's a small town, so you, everybody knows. You, know, you can tell who thing, what things are, of course. But but we're discussing a, a, a number, not a person. Is what you're saying? I think we're talking people. And, uh, right. And I have a, a question with regards to this resolution. If we don't pass the resolution tonight, will the previous resolution still be in effect from 2004? Yeah, the, pre the pre last year's resolution of salaries would be frozen um, going, you know, until such time as you adjust it, if you ever adjust it. Right. Um, but <coughs> the, none of your employees would be getting any type of increase um, if, you, if you defeat this, if you vote this down. That, that's, so that's the issue. <clears throat> and if I may say, I'm uncertain where your numbers are coming from, but my calculation for 2%, except, like I said, for five, maybe six specific people that had either changes in in job titles or well, other circumstances that so led to that. Have is that. Is that also, has, have, uh, one thing I would like to ask, in looking back over these things each year, uh, some, many times multiple jobs on different lines on one year are in separate places and other years are combined and, su and such and such um, is that a component of these changes this year uh, the movement of lines and things like that difference that he's funding here so that like may said, be a component I okay. it, so i don't know what those numbers are that you're referring to that are so different i mean i can go line by line if you'd like to i don't think that's appropriate in I, if you had come to me sooner, I might have been able to go through this. Well, I mean, you did have a meeting, right? 
to you had an opportunity to review this. Yeah, of course. Okay. Well, no, I did not have but a chance to. The, no, this, um, I know that each I know that each on, council this member outside of the financial on Tuesday outside night. of the finance committee met with this document individual. came out on Tuesday well, was, night. For it's the, the same time. as it was last year. Nope. <laughs> it was meant to be discussed in our budget meeting, but it was cut short, so we weren't able to go through the salaries, which is part of the email that I sent you. Okay. It's literally the same document. Every and year. you mentioned that there are five or six employees where there were adjustments for certain reasons. We only have seven or eight permanent employees anyway so okay. five or six with adjustments is a considerable a number differences than two percent in, in what you're looking at here you cited several other differences 14 oh, yeah. percent 16 percent you said yes. there's only two people that were at two percent that's correct so that's wrong it's for your document may may i suggest um Please. based upon what i'm hearing here that maybe um this um gets tabled to the next meeting so that there can be a discussion about these numbers, so that the entire council can be comfortable in terms of what these numbers represent and why things were increased at whatever rates they were increased. Um, so that, because I want the council to be comfortable in terms of a vote, you know, of this importance. And to, to take that a step further, the finance committee did meet with Bonnie for more than an hour and went through these numbers. When salaries came up, I left the room. You did so that this could be discussed without me so there would be no concern it's the same resolution on the consent agenda that's on here every year the same employees that we have year after year some of whom are taking extra steps to further their career for the in the event someday we have people that retire but nonetheless let's table this okay um, we voted not to table. Okay. No, actually, your motion was far beyond tabling it. It, um, it was called for a comprehensive study before any wages could, before this could be voted on. Um, and I, so this would be simply to table it from this meeting to the next meeting without any additional language about having to have a comprehensive study before you vote on this. So it's a different motion, in my opinion, yeah. that I'm suggesting. So motion for a comprehensive study. No, no, that's that's that was defeated already. Okay. It's now just a motion to table this to the motion next meeting. Motion to table just this to the next meeting. Whatever. Resolution 104-2022. Move. Second. Roll call. Graham? Yes. Hughes? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. <clears throat> Silvestri? Yes. Strange? Yes. And Fair? Yes. Okay, uh, motion to approve, did we already cover the uh, give butter? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Re motion to approve resolution 101 through 103 and 105 through 106. Move. Second. Roll call. Graham? Yes. Hughes? Yes. yes. Schwartz? Yes. Silvestri? Yes. Strange? Yes. And Fair? Yes. Second round of public comment. Actually, we still need motions to approve uh, resolutions 99 and 100. Oh, I thought, I thought I we already did that. No, we got to add it from along. Okay. okay. Motion to approve uh, resolution 99 and 100. Actually, you have to take them separately, May, and as they've been pulled out. Okay. Motion to approve resolution 099. Approved. Second. Roll call. Graham? Yes. Hughes? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Silvestri? Yes. Strange? Yes. And Ferry? Yes. Motion to approve resolution 100. Move. Second. Roll call. Graham? Yes. Hughes? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Silvestri? Yes. Strange? Yes. And Ferry? Yes. Okay. okay, public comments. One minute per person. Selling Lord Solitude Village. I am pretty much appalled that we have. Alan Schwartz, whose background is engineering. Am I accurate? Are you an engineer? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, making challenges to financial professionals who have been doing what they do for years and years and years. I just am amazed that you have the audacity to do that. I'm ashamed of you. Sorry. Thank you. I mean, that was what he was voted for to do. I mean, that's our job, but 
Karen Scar, CS7, Robin Lane. I thank you, Alan, and you are educated, and I thank everybody that decided to table it. I think it's rightfully so. If we're gonna have people with added functions, do they need 2% increases as well on those functions? So I think Alan did uh, the taxpayers uh, a, a good service, and that's what we vote for. So thank you very much for doing your job, and thank you for those who decided to vote for tabling this. Thank you. Karen Gill, 15 Mill Street. Thank you, Mr. Swerks. You did it on school board and doing it here, keeping your eye on our tax dollars. May thank you. Can I have two comments? Can I stay after one minute? One minute. <laughs> okay. Uh, regarding the uh, gov pilot, how are you going to work around the sign and seal for the Can you state your Oh, sorry. Do you need a 20 cent check The electronic submission of the permits. Yeah, apparently that's changing now through the state. It's a statewide? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. okay. And then the other question I have is, I'm a little bit embarrassed. I've lived in hybrid for 15 years, and after like seeing your really nice display of the budget, which was understandable, so thank you, I had no idea that the, the school budget was more of my taxes than the municipal budget. Mm -hmm. Like, I had no idea. I'm embarrassed. And I was wondering, is there a presentation as neatly defined as that, that I could see where the school dollars are going? It's on their website. Yeah, the Board of Ed website. I will say it's that that is the way it is in every single town everywhere. That's, I mean, that's very normal. And oh, I'm not saying it's not normal. I just can't believe I didn't know it. Yeah, no, it's, it's expensive to have lots of people teaching kids. Yeah. <laughs> okay, nowadays. so right on the Board of Ed website? Mm -hmm. it, I, yeah, I would imagine so. I, yeah. uh, yes, it is. I'm going to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Follow the guy the nine Hickory Circle. Um, I just want to make a comment about the transparency issues and why I think it was the right choice to kind of have this table and we discussed because I was here. I wasn't here actually for Chapter Forty Eight, but I was one of the voices that came after that, talking about how I thought that was passed and really there wasn't good transparency for the people. This is another example, and and, and I know Michelle with you know with the issues of potentially conflict of interest and that. I would, I would think you'll be the most supportive of making sure that there's a lot of transparency here because I think overall, if you're doing the right thing, people should know that it's been done the right way. And if there's ever a question that is raised about whether there are things that have been done in a way that might not be appropriate, we want it to be out there and, and that the council is fully aware of it and people understand it, particularly the public. Because I, I know these are salaries and whatnot, but in the end, at least the public should know that it was looked at by people responsible and in the end, they feel that what was done was fair and, and equitable for the taxpayers. Doug Walker, and I also just wanted to thank Alan for going through that exercise and identifying those issues. Thank you. I think it's pretty funny because there's some people on this council that have a vested or a, a you know a, an agenda to make sure that there's as much mistrust as possible. No. There was never any conflict of interest. First of all, everybody up here knows it. Uh, second of all, we did 30-year projections on Chapter 48. It's not in proje pro projected to increase payroll costs at all. In fact. Our projections. That is absolutely wrong. So, see, we. This is where I'm talking now. Okay, so I'm happy to sit down with you or anybody and go through it. But again, the reason I'm so vocal about it is because there's no conflict, and I know what the hell I'm talking about. So it's incredibly frustrating when I have arguments over, you know, accounting when there's. I'm not a CPA, but there's CPAs who totally disagree with how some people on council want to look at these things. And I'm just going to leave it at that um, because I am embarrassed uh, as, a, as a business owner. You know, I believe putting our faith and money and investment behind our employees is what takes us further. We want these fields improved. We want the commons done. We want our garbage picked up. We want our brush picked up, our leaves. We want our police to show up if there's a problem. And now we're saying, we can't even give them a 2% raise. When was the last time you got a 2% raise, Alan? I, I haven't gotten okay. one in eight That's years. all I'm going to say. Under, 
Well, you're a teacher. Or, okay, so down. you should be arguing. You should be eight, eight fighting eight eight for your employees but, but, that we I, all I, pay I don't for. think it's appropriate no, it's a, to that insinuate. That was my comment, I know, and that's mine. I don't Aren't think it's appropriate to insinuate that people are trying to build mistrust. I you don't are definitely. I you don't you voted I don't, on you, this. Will you be you, quiet and let Mr. Strange no, speak? Excuse me. I'm the mayor, and I have the floor. Okay? And that's just the way it is. I'm sorry if that makes you mad. You stopped your comments, and I was going to make my comments. No, that's it. That's, that's the last you of my comments. No, are that's you not allowed to make a motion that public comment? council people are allowed Barry. to comment until the council votes to end the comments? No. The, that was the end of the comments, and I have I made a motion. Own. No. It doesn't work that way. Well, Robert's Rules of Order said it says it does. Do okay. we have a second or not? Okay. Well, what was your, what was your motion, Steve? I, I made a motion that we continue to allow council to make comments until council decides not to make comments and votes on it. I second the motion. So right. let people talk until council decides not to talk. You just don't want me to talk until you finish talking. Yeah, I believe, Mayor, that there's a motion now on the floor that does have to uh, uh, be voted on. For, and I lost track of what that is. I think the motion was to allow the council to continue comments until the council decides um, that it's done making comments. Okay. Is council does council want to vote on whether they're done making comments? Roll call. Graham. What exactly am I saying yes or no to? <laughs> that we as a council will decide and vote when we feel this discussion is done. That sounds like something that's already in place. But I suppose I would say that would be something I would endorse. Yeah. Hughes? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Silvestri? Yes. Strange? Yes. Barry? Yes. Yeah. I'm happy to listen to whatever you would like to say as well. But I would simply like to be able to say what I was going to say. Which is simply that I don't think, and I don't think I've suggested that there's been any intentional conflict of interest or doing anything okay. nefarious in terms of salaries. I don't. I've, and I haven't said that. I don't think it's appropriate to suggest that anyone up here is trying to sow mistrust. Alan has always been picky about looking at the numbers back when he was on the school board and now. I, so he, he's looking at these. Uh, I don't have answers to all of these changes. I feel that a lot of them are related to two different line items being combined one year where they were not combined the previous year, and that makes it look like a larger increase than without a person actually getting an increase. I, mean, I think that's, that probably accounts for a lot of these changes. But at the I same time, I, well, but at the same time, I don't know for sure that that is exactly the case. I don't think it's unreasonable for us to I look at them. to you when you sat down with Bonnie? Did you sit down with Bonnie? Specific salaries were not discussed on every single point, but things were discussed in, in general terms of bringing things up. That's true. Mm -hmm. But actually, the time we vote about it and discuss it in public is when we're supposed to discuss these things. And so having looked at it and looked at it afterwards and having Alan look through it and bring up ideas, I said, okay, you know what? Interesting. I'll look at it too. Uh, but as I said, Making sure that all of us feel comfortable understand it doesn't mean that we don't think people deserve compensation or that people shouldn't be getting their appropriate comps or a raise if they deserve it or you know, whatever it happens to be. I'm not saying that at all. I've, I've said to everyone who's ever asked me, one of the things I've enjoyed about being on council is I've been amazed to see the commitment that our people who work for us and volunteer for us have to the town I, in every place. And yet this is the first time this has been pulled from the agenda. I don't know if this is the first time I'll that this has been is. pulled ever to discuss. So I do know that there's been research. The agendas are up on the on the website through going back to 2017. Yeah. You're not going to find a single item that you guys pulled from the agenda or voted against, for that matter. I challenge, please. Is everybody listening? And just, so, okay. it's I, never I, been pulled I, from I, the agenda. That's all. I would like to say that this. Yes, this resolution is about salaries and salary increases, but it's also about overall compensation for the employees of the borough of Highbridge. That's, That's correct. What did you say? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm not saying that. I'm not I saying that this. Chris, it's, it's I'm saying that this particular resolution is about salary increases. It's about but salaries and wages. Salaries, wages, and increases. But there is a larger issue 
when you are discussing salary increases and, and salaries of overall compensation to each employee. Now we have voted to provide <laughs> retiree health care benefits to employees of the borough which can and will be and has shown will be a significant increase in compensation for each employee that will be receiving them. Not true. Well, it'll, it'll be an Oh my gosh, how can you say? Because I know what I'm talking about. And I do too. It's basic, but you it don't. basic excuse me? You don't. I, it okay. is basic well, okay. mathematics. When you provide someone with additional Which, health care okay. monies to the to their compensation. They're receiving additional monies as compensation. It's, if you're saying that they're not receiving additional monies for compensation, it's a disingenuous comment. Well, okay, and, that, and that's, what the situation is going after that is, is not directly related to salaries in this instance. Uh, I, it is reasonable to think that in the long term, coming up with a balanced approach for both might be reasonable. That is exactly right. A balanced but approach between salaries and overall compensation. But it doesn't isn't directly related to the salaries now. It, it is directly related to salaries. Well, okay. but not as part moment. of an overall plan. Okay, but not at the not, a, not a, that this year, for example. has anything to say maybe it's time for a motion to end the discussion by the panel by the council I'll, I'll make that motion if no one has anything to say I'll make the motion second roll call Graham yes. Hughes yes Schwartz yes Silvestri yes Strange yes and Fair yeah legal issue sorry no thank you ma'am not yet <laughs> <laughs> I'll pass. Yeah. Communications, Adam. We have until the end of this moratorium ending March 15th, two letters, both in English and Spanish. Okay. Uh, on to the bill list. We have a total of $682,881.20. Motion to approve the bill list. Move. Second. Roll call. Graham? Yes. Hughes? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Silvestri? Yes. Strange? Yes. And Ferry? Yeah. Well, if there's no further business, can I get a motion to adjourn? Move. Move. Roll call. Second. Graham? Yes. Hughes? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Silvestri? Yes. Strange? Yes. And Perry? Yes.